Welcome back. This is the first video of the uh, third chapter, so the last chapter of the first module. So this, this whole new chapter is called Regulating Substances. We're going to cover this syllabus dot point first. It says, explain why the concentrations of water in cells should be maintained for narrow range for optimal function. Remember that word uh, concentration? This refers to how much of it is in there. So how much water is in the cell? So um, why should the levels of water be maintained at a certain level for optimum function? Now the first thing I'm going to go over again is um, what cells actually are and why and why water is important in cells. So we've got something called cytoplasm. I'll underline this here in the diagram, cytoplasm, which is just that greenish thing here. And cytoplasm was basically mainly water, purely water. So majority of a cell, I think it's like 80% of a cell, is water. Um, and the reason why we need to have this water is, if you can imagine, here is a cell. If this were a cell and you would have no water, you can see this enzyme substrate. What they have to do is they have to come together. Right? They have to come together here for the chemical reaction to occur. But the problem is they're both large molecules and they don't really move that well by themselves. So these will be stationary. They won't move here. These two won't move. And they won't be able to actually connect and the chemical reaction won't go ahead. But if we add some water into this mix, so if we actually um, make the cell a watery medium, so if, if water is just so water in the form of cytoplasm, so we call that cytoplasm, if that's present, then what can happen is this chemical reaction can happen because um, these two will bump into each other. And what happens next is you're going to have a new product formed. So a chemical reaction would have occurred. So two new things have formed because the enzyme did its job. Right? So here we have our substrate and now we have our two products because the enzyme broke them apart. So the reason why, one of the first reasons why we need to have a good normal level of water in our cells is because water acts as a solvent for chemical reactions. So solvent means um, something that dissolves things. So your enzyme and your substrates can swim in water and f because they swim in water they can actually meet. Without water they would just be standing, they wouldn't be able to meet. Um, so yeah, this, this makes sure that they have chemical reactions occurring. So the first point is water, we need water so that chemical reactions can occur because water is the solvent for chemical reactions in cells. The second part was we need to have a good shape for ourselves. We need to maintain its shape. So look at this picture. I'm going to explain this picture as well. But if you look at this picture, you see three states. Something called the isotonic solution, which is the cell where it looks like it's quite as it should. So just look at the top one. These are the animal cells. So this is where it's good shape, where it's as it should be. Uh, hypotonic and hypotonic. So hypotonic is it's become shriveled. It's shriveled up. And the hypotonic, it's called, it's called lice. Lice means just it's burst. So here you can see it's burst. Obviously, these other two states are not ideal. We want to keep its perfect shape. So we want to have an isotonic solution. So I'll quickly go over what that actually means. If you remember the, what osmosis was, osmosis was water. So only water traveling from a low solute to a high solute concentration, right? So water travels from low solid to high solid concentration. Now here I've got these three same uh, scenarios, hypertonic, isotonic, and hypotonic. And what hypertonic actually means is hyper means high. And hypotonic solution refers to that the solution itself is high in solute. So these gray, these brown dots that I've drawn here, both in the cell and in the solution outside, is the solute, right? So in this case we have um, five solutes outside the cell and three inside. So compared to inside, the solution itself is hypotonic, it has more solute, it's higher in solute. So what happens when you look at osmosis, if water travels from a low solute to high solute, so obviously we've got a low solute inside compared to outside, so low here and high in the solution. So what water is going to do is water is going to travel out. So water is going to leave the cell what happens is it's going to shrivel up. So these things will be gone because this will just go all... So you can imagine again, you can look at that fr first picture again. That shriveled up. But you can imagine the cell is not going to be as it should. It's going to be smaller and it's going to be shriveled up. So 
what's going to remain is this part, less of it, because the water has left the solution. Right? So hyper hypertonic is not good because uh, the cell shrivels up. Whereas if you look at hypotonic, if you, hypo means low, so the solution is low in terms of solute compared to the cell. So again, we've got this time we've got high inside and low outside. And what that means is that you have water going from because of the, because of osmosis, you've got water traveling from a low to a high. So it's going to go from because low is outside, it's going to go inside. So what's going to happen is this is going to become bigger and bigger. More and more more and more water is going to go in because water travels from a low solute, so from in, from the water into the cell, and eventually it's going to burst because it's going to, it's going to go bigger and bigger. So obviously that's not ideal either. So perfect scenario is isotonic, and uh, iso actually I think it means same, but I, I mean definitely the actual scenario is that you have three of them inside the cell and three of them outside. So same inside as outside. So solution and the cell are the same, which means that water flow will be in and out will be equal. So there's no problem. The cell has this perfect perfect shape, so it won't burst or won't shrivel up. Right? So um, we want to keep an isotonic solution. Isotonic solution is what we want to keep. And we're going to make sure our kidneys keep the water balance and salt balance at a good level to keep that to keep that isotonic solution. So I'll go over those two points again. Water is important because it acts as a chemical reaction. Remember, there's enzymes and substrates. About if water were, in the, were not in the cell, and they would just be standing there, waiting for them, waiting for them to connect, but they would never connect because it would be standing there, and, and nothing would happen. Whereas if you have put a water solvent in there, a water level means that they can actually swim around, and eventually they will meet, and then you have a chemical reaction happening, and a product will be formed. And yeah, enzymes are obviously important for every single chemical reaction. And without water, then these enzyme reactions won't happen. The second part was maintaining its shape. So we want to keep an isotonic solution because the, both the hyper and the hypotonic solutions means that we um, shrivel up or we um, explode. Our cells, not we, but our cells explode. Um, whereas an isotonic solution means it has a good shape. So explain why the concentration of water in cells should be maintained within a narrow range for optimal function. Because we need water uh, at a good level for chemical reactions to occur at a, their good rate, and to maintain the cell of shape of the cell, obviously if the cell bursts, then um, optimal function is not achieved. Hope that makes sense.